Hello and welcome to week number 44 of the 2024 Baking Challenge. It is the first weekend in November and I've decided we need some cozy cookies. So today we are making soft ginger molasses cookies. So grab your ingredients and let's bake. So technically this isn't the exact recipe from King Arthur's website and that's because I've decided to simplify it a little bit. I'm short on time. I really want these cookies. I've excluded the ginger syrup. Now if you want to go to their website, you can absolutely find the recipe. I will tell you the only substitution is the molasses. So for their recipe, it's a fourth a cup of molasses and a fourth a cup of ginger syrup. We don't have ginger syrup in our store here in, in locally. Um, I don't have time to travel to go buy ginger syrup or have it ordered. So what you can do is you can substitute that fourth a cup of ginger syrup with another fourth a cup of molasses. Now I happen to love molasses. I really feel like it's the whole winter vibe going on. I'm okay with the substitution, but if you're not okay with it, try a fourth a cup of molasses and a fourth a cup of ginger syrup if you can find it. If you can't find it, you can make it on your own. Again, I'm a little strapped for time this week, so this is what we have going on. Um, having said that, there is like a pound of butter in this. So we have 16 tablespoons, that's two sticks of butter, room temperature. My butter's been sitting out in the microwave all night. If you have animals and you know you're gonna bake in the morning, Sticking your butter in the microwave overnight is just fine. It's, it's not going to go bad. It's fine. People leave butter out on the counters all the time and just live that way. I used to do it when I had toast every morning. My butter lived in the case on the counter. Now, I don't do that anymore. I don't eat a lot of toast, but the butter goes in the microwave on a plate. It sits overnight. It's nice and room temperature and ready to go for the next day. So, in honor of speeding things up, I am breaking out the mixer today. There is a full pound of butter in here. To that, we are going to add a full cup of sugar, granulated sugar. I really did not pre-measure anything out today. Flying by the seat of my pants, I am. And we are gonna get that sugar and butter all mixed up. So we're just gonna let that go and do its thing. Oh, preheating your oven to 350. Make sure there's nothing inside. For everyone that stores things in the oven, hey, no judgment here. I store plenty of things in the lower oven, um, unless it's cookie season or um, Friendsgiving, and then I have to pull everything out because both ovens will be in use. All right, butter and sugar are together just fine. Uh, light and fluffy is what we're going for. It's definitely light and fluffy. Okay, next we're gonna beat in the molasses um, or molasses and ginger syrup, your baking soda, salt, and spices. So baking soda, we have two and one fourth teaspoons, which is a lot for baking soda, but that's okay. So, one teaspoon, two teaspoons, and a fourth. Look at me measuring everything out like you're supposed to. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on to light so it can start working that in. Oh, I have some baking soda left in the spoon there. Okay, a teaspoon of table salt, which I did not get out. I'm even measuring the salt, you guys. What, what kind of chaos baking is this? I'm gonna go ahead and add the molasses now. I understand that a lot of people are not big fans of molasses. I get that. It, it's one of those things that I happen to really enjoy. Sorry, I'm looking for my teeny tiny spatula. I love molasses. I do not love dealing with molasses. It is sticky and messy. I love the smell of it though. All right, here we go. Mm. 
That's actually not so bad. Half a cup right on the nose, in we go. For this, you probably want to stop your, <laughs> for this part, you probably want to stop your paddle moving because I just got it all over the top of my paddle. Try to get as much of this out. I love molasses. I don't even know what molasses is. I just know that I love it. Okay. Let me just make a mess here. All right. Okay. Next up we have one and one fourth teaspoons of cinnamon. That doesn't seem like enough, but I am going to trust the process here. All right, there's my one. And there's my four. Pinks are smelling very good in this kitchen right now. Oh my gosh, I said I wanted a cozy cookie. This is gonna be a cozy cookie. All right, we have a teaspoon of ginger. That's a little more than a teaspoon, but what are you gonna do about it? Ginger is one of those things that doesn't always like to cooperate. And then we have one and one fourth teaspoons of cloves or allspice. I am going with allspice. Um, I gave both options the sniff test this morning and I decided that allspice is where my heart is today. So that's what we're going for. Halloween was yesterday. Samhain for those that celebrate. Today is the beginning of Day of the Dead. I want cozy fall vibes and this cookie will hopefully deliver. Okay. Those are the spices. Okay, two eggs going in next. And I'm gonna slow this down. All right, there's my two eggs in. Now for the eggs, you're gonna beat these very well. Make sure you're scraping down the sides. If you have a KitchenAid mixer and your mixer is not properly balanced, make sure you're pulling your bowl down or pulling your tilt head up and scraping around the bottom of the bowl. I don't think this one is properly balanced. That is something that I'm gonna have to work on. I need to get one of those uh, rings from Mr. Mixer. And yes, I am still going to get the other mixer fixed, although I've been toying with the idea of doing it myself. So um, for someone that's great at construction but not so mechanically inclined, we'll see how that turns out for me. All right, I'm gonna stop this and give it a good scrape because I can tell that it is not incorporating off the sides. and around the bottom, get everything scraped up. <laughs> I know there's just butter, eggs, and spices and molasses in here. It smells really good, guys. I think this is gonna be a good cookie. I feel like this is going to be a good cookie. And also, I taste smells, so I forget what that's called. Does anybody else taste smells? All right. Get this going a little bit more incorporated. And then we're gonna add our flour. So flour is three and one half cups of flour. And I'm going to have to concentrate really hard on counting. I'm gonna drop this down to a stir speed. Oh, I forget, I like to keep my duster in here, so. All right, so because I'm using a half, you can always weigh it as well. I don't tend to weigh cookies, um, my ingredients with cookies, I just wing it. So because I'm using a half, I need six, seven of these. That's one. That's two. Three. 
three. <laughs> Four. If I have enough in here. Five. Six. One more. Seven. All right. I'm going to kick this up another notch, let it do its thing. This was a very easy process. This only took a couple minutes. All right, I do have some incorporation problems here in the bottom. Let's do some scraping. I would imagine that using only molasses is going to make this not quite a, a, it might make it a slightly drier cookie, although I don't know. I've made molasses cookies one other time and the recipe was nothing like this. So, all right. It is a little bit of a sticky dough. That's okay. That's okay because it smells amazing and I'm here for it. Get the last bit incorporated. There it goes. All right. All right, I'm gonna clean up and we'll be back to scoop these out. Okay, for this, you're gonna want clean hands because you may get a little dirty. So you're gonna take a tablespoon and we're gonna drop it in a bowl of sugar. Now you can use the pearl sugar, coarse sparkling sugar, granulated sugar. This is the, uh, this is that coarse cane sugar that I have a whole metric ton of. So, it's not an overly sticky dough. Like, it's not coming off on my hands. It feels like it could, but it's not. You are gonna leave about two and a half inches between these cookies. Um, they will spread. That's that pound of butter for you. It's a soft dough. It's going to be a soft cookie. It's going to be a cozy cookie. And I love that for me today because I really need some comfort cookies. It's been a very long trying week at work and I require sugar and comfort. It's just too much to get done and not enough hours in the day to do it. That's okay. All right, once you have your cookies on your tray and rolled out, you're gonna bake them for about 10 minutes. The centers of these are going to look puffy and soft. They're supposed to. All right, you're gonna take the cookies out of the oven. You're gonna leave them on your cookie sheets for about 10 minutes. They're still cooking. They're still baking. I know it's weird, but trust me, they're still going to bake when they come out of the oven. So you're gonna leave them on the cookie sheet for 10 minutes and then you can put them to, onto a wire rack to cool completely. And I'm going through a lot more sugar than I thought I would here. That's okay. That's all right. I've been meaning to try to use this sugar up anyways. Because I have had it for a while and it is supposedly reaching the end of its life cycle. That's okay. 
These smell so good. I'm so excited about this. I cannot wait to try them. All right, in the oven for 10, cool on the pan for 10, then to a wire rack, and I'll see you back when that's done. So the kitchen does smell like fall and cozy and every single comforting vibe that I wanted. And now, now we get to try the cookie. So they did stay puffed up in the middle when I pulled them out of the oven. And then over the course of the 10 minutes while they rested on the cookie sheet, they did sink down. It's a firm cookie. The coarse sugar is really neat on the outside. Um, it's a soft cookie on the inside. This is a really neat cookie. Okay, so the crunchy sugar on the outside gives it that crunch, but the inside is completely soft. All of these fall flavors are there. The molasses isn't overwhelming. The ginger doesn't bite you the way some things do. It honestly is the perfect amount of cinnamon. Um, I love this cookie. I am in love with this cookie. Out of all the cookies, that we have made this year throughout this challenge. I think this one is my favorite. I like this even more than the stuffed cookies. So this is absolutely a winning recipe. Well, that is it for this week of the baking challenge. I wish I could give you a hint about what next week is gonna be, but I honestly can't remember and I do not have the spreadsheet in front of me. I do hope that you will hit the subscribe button below and join me next weekend. I also hope that you made this cookie. If you did, Drop a comment and let me know what you liked about it, if you enjoyed this recipe, or if you didn't, if you used the ginger syrup, maybe. I'm very interested in that. Also, head over to the Facebook page if you are so inclined, because every Wednesday or Thursday, I will drop the name of the recipe plus the ingredient list of what we will be baking the next weekend. That way you have plenty of time to get your shopping done and you can join along if you would like. I'm going to go finish baking these cookies because I still have quite a bit left and clean the kitchen up and I will see you next weekend.